I think what I'm going to do here is play a run on Ascension 20 as the Laundry Day champ. See how he... Uh, see how the champ character feels since I last played. He was pretty, pretty new when I played him the first time, so I'm curious how he's changed with some feedback. And I want to see those glorious 10-pack abs shredding the spire. Let's embark. Arise! Alright, we don't get a starting bonus. I completely understand. So, in Slay the Spire Downfall mode, um, the first thing to highlight is the, the map. It is fundamentally different. I think they changed the fire spawning. Interesting. So where previously there's a rest site right before the final boss of the act, now there's a rest site right at the start of the act. You venture from the top downwards through the spire, and you must face one of the three, or one of the four, excuse me, adventurer classes as your act boss. So our act one boss here is the Silent, and we'll be fighting the Silent, who has her own deck of cards and will fight us with them uh, when we get there. Oh, it's one of five now. So because because Hermit has been officially incorporated into the mod, he's now a boss. That's very exciting. Excellent touch, if so. So other things to highlight here are that we have souls instead of money. It's the resource of the villains of the Spire. Our enemies will be the ones we're familiar with. These elites are a Gremlin Knob or a Lagavulin or a Three Sentries. For example, and they'll have their usual rewards. So, we've got a starting deck of four strikes, three defends, Berserker's Shout, gain three vigor. I do remember the champ having a lot of keywords, so uh, apologies in advance for all of the text reading we're going to be doing here. Vigor makes our next attack deal additional damage. Oh, that, okay. Oh, that's actually the Vigor keyword, which is already used in Slay the Spire. That's definitely not how that was done before. Then we enter the Berserker stance. Skill bonus. Gain two Vigor. That's right. The Champs cards have a skill bonus and a finisher effect. I don't quite remember how those are activated, but I'm sure we'll sort that out momentarily. Finisher cards... Exit your stance and trigger the finisher bonus, which our starting card Execute does. So we'll be able to do stuff like gain block or strength when we play Execute. Kind of like the, the Watcher's stances, um, but a little bit more intricate are the Champ's stances. They had a Simplify patch recently, a lot of reduced card text. Well, that's what I was talking about. When, when um, playtesting and feedback meet modded content, you get cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Very excited. So, looking at our map layout, can we get any free elites here? I guess I could get one here. If our next three enemies flee in terror, odds aren't great. Or I can just take some Chonkitude. Become beefy. Pretty easy to get very beefy in Spire. Note that you can fight elites a little... Actually, there's a, a much more likely elite snipe this way. I don't know what I was looking at. This is practically guaranteed. In fact, this could be a double elite snipe. Okay, yeah. I want a double elite snipe. Although, it would mean basically no rest sites. That's a little awkward. Hmm. There's also four elites in a row over here. A spooky path. That's a really spooky path. Now let's um let's try this. We'll take the the Niao's Lament equivalent and try to get uh, two elite combats for one health here. But there says when you are in a stance playing a skill it gets you the skill bonus. You get the skill bonus every time you play any skill. That sounds really too good. <laughs> I can't wait to break that. Anyway. 
Only three times per stance. Okay. Yes. That sounds much more reasonable. So we actually start with... <clears throat> Uh, arrest, upgrade, or recall. You can choose this moment at the start of a downfall run to upgrade one of your starter cards. And looking at execute here, this gets plus six damage. Um, that would be an exceptional upgrade. The other thing that we can do is recall to gain the ruby key. The keys work a little bit differently in the downfall mode. You must obtain the keys and then later at a rest site spend some souls to break the key. Breaking the key gives you a passive benefit, depending on the key type. I think the red key is plus one strength permanently, which is very, very nice. Um, and then if you break all three keys and kill the merchant by the end of the run, you get to go to Act 4. But I am definitely tempted to upgrade Execute. Eight counter. Oh my. This goes to six figure. Those are very good card upgrades in the starting deck. I think I'm just going to go with a very basic and simple but exceptional execute plus here at our first rest site. We will recall it the second rest site. The acid and sharp objects may hurt. Um, something that's really delightful about the Slay the Spire downfall mod is that each of the events have been kind of rewritten from the perspective of the villain. So some are the same, like the Scrap Ooze here. This is the vanilla text. Um, but others will see them from a, a different perspective with different options that are pretty entertaining. Let's have a dig inside the Scrap Ooze. How many hit points does it take to get a relic? Ow. Ow. Yay! A lantern. One energy on turn one in exchange for some of our health. That's fine. Totally fine. Boss! A cheery, disheveled fellow approaches you gleefully. You know this man well. It's me, Ranwid. You wouldn't believe what I've just swindled from the cursed heroes. Do you have any more junk I can give them? You appreciate his friendliness and consider your options. Surely you have something Ranwid can use in his next... deal. We can give that lantern up to gain two potions right now. No other relics to give to him. I don't think we'll give him anything. I'm going to keep this lantern, thank you. Nothing today, boss. Okay, scampers away. And we've also successfully gotten a double free elite, so I'm happy. Intimidated by abs, the jawworm flees. So, we may choose a card. Arena Preparation that gives us two random skills with Retain. That's kind of cool, actually. Skillful dodge. Four block and four counter. Extra effective played in defensive stance. Increase these effects by three. Hmm. Enter a stance you aren't in. The next finisher this turn deals 10 damage to all enemies. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I think I want either fancy footwork or arena preparation. I think it's I think it's all champ cards that have a crown on them. Every single one, including the strikes and defends so far, has a crown on top of it. So I think it's just an indicator that we're looking at a champ card. Defensive Rampage? Kind of. Does it increase the, the scaling with the upgrade? Yeah. Hmm. That's kind of cool. What do you do upgraded? Three? Holy moly. And you? Fifteen. Give me arena prep. Gotta see that in action. Oh, right, this is a store. Wait a minute, how's this gonna work? Stores are not stores, they are fights. The merchant has fled. I don't think that counts as killing the merchant, but I do get a card reward. Precise Thrust. Do 7 damage, and if you're in Berserker mode, do it again. If you're in Defensive mode, gain 7 block. It's like Iron Wave. 
Tornado Punch. 12 damage to everybody. If you're in defensive mode, gain block per enemy hit. It's a pretty good area damage card. Or Enraged Bash. If in Berserker Stance, hits an additional time this combat. Now that's how Rampage should work. Increase the number of hits every time you play it. That would be such a better card. That would be such a better card. Might take the Tornado Punch, though. I have Berserker and Defensive Stance currently in the starting deck, too. Take the Tornado Punch. Sacrifice. So, when the Merchant is vanquished or flees, you can proceed to the Heart Shop, which is, uh, well, it's got a nice gray-red appearance to it. And there's a creepy heart tentacle that points at the things at the store. Yeah. Adrenal Armor. Lo love the uh, custom art. Crown Ring. <laughs> That's great. Draw two attacks. I want any of these cards. Scry is a thing. Gain two blocks, scry three for zero. Fascinating. Lots of zero-cost skills in Champ's Armory, it seems. Technical Jig. When you enter a stance, trigger its skill bonus twice. So when I enter Berserker, gain four damage on the next attack. When I enter Defensive, gain six counter. Hmm. Oh yeah, there's some funky new potions, too. There's a lot of uh, potions that are added in Downfall. Some of them are specific to characters, just like the regular potions in Slay the Spire. Everybody's got a, a common and uncommon and a rare potion. Pizzazz Potion looks to be a common potion. I think this might be a champ potion. Based on the name, I'm guessing it is. Energy Potion. And a Spiked Energy Drink. Muddle, that is, uh, re-roll the cost of. The two highest cost cards in your hand. Cannot cost three. Wow. That's a pretty sweet um, energy rerolling potion. Very good for a Sneko deck or just any deck with three or two cost cards. Think about a technical jig. Give that a try. Give me a power. <laughs> okay, so we're only getting one free elite because I forgot how merchants worked. The Lagavulin that is asleep is also fleeing from us. Get ourselves an anchor, so our turn one is even better. And some more cards. Deathblow. Oh man, that's a strong card upgraded. Big area damage, and then add big damage onto your next attack too. And gain 15 vigor. Holy moly. Does exhaust. So it's only a one-time thing, but man, it's strong. Bob and Weave. Enter Berserker. Gain Block and Vigor. Neat. Hey there, DJ Dragonflame. I do want more stance entering cards. Let's grab Bob and Weave. All right, I actually don't have to fight this elite now. I could, so I'm not getting it for free. I could do something more reasonable and take the rest site so that we could recall. Hmm, not a bad idea. Although we'll be okay in our um, in our first real elite fight, probably. I'm gonna go for the recall. Early. Brass Tax. Start combat with two Metallicize. Oh man, that is a sweet bonus. Two block per turn, every turn, with no downside whatsoever. Kind of like a, a half power, what is this, a common relic? Yeah, common relic. Like a half power plated armor, the thread needle. But you can't lose it. That's cool. That's cool. Hmm. 
<laughs> okay, so these are the indicators for <laughs> for our uh, skill bonus. We can trigger the skill bonus up to three times. So we start in defensive stance, that's right. We have the champion's crown at the start of combat, enter defensive or berserker stance. I thought it was going to give me a choice, but I guess it just picks one at random, which I am completely okay with. So if we're in defensive stance, that means Tornado Punch will give absolutely enormous block. Definitely. Can I enter defensive if I'm already in defensive? No, but it did activate my skill bonus. Cool, let's keep doing that. So now we have 10 stacks of counter. We'll do 10 damage back. I got 31 block. Oh my. We're already producing some very large numbers with this character. Hey, good old taunt. Apply weak and vulnerable. I like that. Gain block twice if any enemy is weak. Fascinating. Bottled Technique. Trigger your current stance's skill bonus five times. Okay. Seems pretty good. Are you a fan of knives? Five damage to all enemies, twice as much if you're in Berserk. Bring it on. Nine block, nine counter. This is a finisher move. Requires being in a stance. You must be in a stance to play a finisher card. Or Iron Fortress. Gain it two dexterity, and then... Interesting that it says, at the end of each turn, gain three block. I, I intuit that to mean three stacks of metallicize. Gain two dex and three metallicize. For one card, is pretty sweet, actually. Hey, and welcome, Zoo. This, this is the champ. The champ's all about um, playing cards in combination. The chance can, champ can enter different stances. Currently, we have access to Berserker stance and defensive stance, an offensive stance and a defensive stance. Each stance uh, activates effects on certain cards. Cards that say combo will provide additional effects if we're in the relevant stance. And then cards that say Finisher will activate uh, a special bonus and cause us to leave our stance. Anyway, I want to try out Iron Fortress, definitely. Well, I guess we'll see how it ends up working. What's the upgraded version of this, by the way? Six? Oh my. Six? Imagine upgrading Metallicize and you get three more block per turn. Hype. Alright, let's fight an elite. Greetings, Gremlin Nub. Prepare to be destroyed. Enter Berserker mode. So we started in Berserker stance already. So we'll gain two vigor, two damage on our next attack any time we play a skill. Can't re-enter this, right? That's correct. I almost want to not play strike because of execute. I don't think that's wise though. So our next attack deals 13 additional damage. Don't mind if I do. Oh, we did draw Execute. Well, heck. So that'll cause us to leave our current stance. And we'll gain a Strength. Can't Tornado Punch and Execute, unfortunately. Am I allowed to... Bottled Technique? Does that work if I have no charges remaining? I'm not sure. Guess we could find out the hard way, perhaps. Any bonus triggers, ignore the limit. Good. Excellent. Strictly only for playing cards. So this... Yes, that gives me 10 vigor, making this hit twice for 19. Get destroyed, sir. Oh, I 
question is, can I... Can I finish him? Or do I have to liquid memory as the finisher to do that? Let's see what arena preparation can give me. Some angry rope a dope. Gain 12 block. Next turn, gain an energy and draw two cards. Interesting. Fascinating that I got two of those. So you're telling me I can defensive shout rope a dope to gain absolutely filthy amounts of block this turn. Meaning, I think we get to hold on to our potion. That gives me 22 block. Although, he's attacking for 37. I'm cool with it. Knob destroyed. We get the old coin giving us 300 souls, incentivizing heading to uh, a merchant combat sometime soon. Essence of Steel's not too bad. Here's a taunt. This is what, 2-2? Two, two? Oh, to all enemies. Interesting. Only 1-1 one, one still. Target enemy gains one strength, but we gain huge amounts of damage on the next hit, or a rare clobber. Deal damage and then gain block equal to unblocked damage dealt. Classic. Great with Vigor, especially. Champ has lots of ways to stack damage. Simple plus three upgrade. It's a, a one-cost wallop, essentially. I like it. I like it a lot. I'll take that, Clover. I like it. A better Iron Wave. Definitely. Definitely. Better wallop. Can question marks be random merchants still? Yes. We will hope that they are not. But yes, they certainly can. Can only last for one turn, right? No? Counter lasts until the next time you receive damage? That's ridiculous. What does Iron Fortress work? Oh yeah, that is plus three Metallic size. I thought so. Okay. I thought so. Trigger two times without exiting your stance. Gain ten block. Interesting. Huh. Red 888, did you hear about the champ who became an accountant? He was a really good bean counter. Stance, dance. Choose a stance to enter. If you were already in that stance, gain a combo of that stance. Oh, I love it. That's definitely... That's a common card? Or the upgraded version just says, choose a stance to enter, gain a combo of that stance. And isn't it a beautiful, beautiful artwork there? This turn, your skill bonus effects are increased by two. That actually seems like a very powerful card to combo with, too. By gain a combo, it means add a card with combo to your hand. Understood. Appreciate the clarification there. Or circumvent. Gain six block, draw two if you're in a stance. I'll take a stance dance. You come across a dead adventurer on the floor. His spirit still lingers in the area. It, it also, it looks as though he's been gouged and trampled by a horned beast. A soul harvesting ritual could yield results here, but whichever creature slew this man may return soon. That's a shame, because I was really hoping to find a pair of pants. Anyway, let's go harvesting. 
While channeling the ritual, we are caught off guard by the knob. We started in defensive stance. Whenever you enter a stance, trigger its skill bonus twice. I want to strike and then enter Berserker Stance and stack the Vigor. Okay, so we have plus 10 damage on the next hit. Hopefully we'll draw Execute. Or Clobber. Clobber works really well, too. Oh, that's right, just Champ. Champ just has Reinforced Body as a card. It fits for him, actually. On guard. If your block is broken this turn, gain block next turn. That's kind of cool. So I want to play... Clobber. Strike. Strike. Berserker Shout. And yes, you can't re-enter a stance you're already in, looks like. Unfortunately, we did not get... Um, execute into our hand here. So I'm not sure how to kill the knob. I could maybe go Defensive Shout, Tornado Punch, Liquid Memories, Tornado Punch. We can do a lot of damage that way. But I'm a little bit worried we might get clobbered here by the knob. Knob clobbered, as it were. This would be so much easier if we'd only drawn... ...the thingamajig. We could also Liquid Memories on Clobber, which is pretty hype too. Although I'd need to be able to get good bonus damage for that. Um, which we currently do have. I can block for 11. Whereas Tornado Punch is going to do more damage if I return it, and still give 7 block. But if I'm killing next turn with Execute, I should just go for ma most block on this turn. I could also maybe just play Reinforce Body. It's true, we do have to play a skill to uh, to get defensive shot, uh, you know, to get the tornado punch to actually block. But, that's... We're gonna net gain from that, for sure. Any other reasonable options that we have? I don't think so. I just go Liquid Memories on Clobber and play Reinforced Body. Um, we're not going to do enough damage to kill next turn, are we? I don't think so. Alright, let's do Tornado Punch stuff then. counter in defensive stance. It's not really a good reason to play more skills. This is still worth playing too, since I'm guaranteed killing next turn with Execute. I think. Question mark? Oh yeah, I do 10 counter. I'm definitely killing next turn. Let's play this too. We're technically alive. Not by a huge margin, mind you. Get the Spectre's Head. When you enter a stance, gain a basic striker to fend that costs zero and has exhaust. That seems pretty sweet. A spiked energy drink, letting us muddle the two highest cost cards in our hand. Headbutt, also a just stolen card from Defect and completely fits for Champ. Or uh, stolen from Ironclad, excuse me. Do I want it though? Unupgraded common? I don't know. What I would really like at this point is a heal. We unfortunately don't get a rest site before the boss. 
which is a, a challenging part of the downfall. This thing? Music striker defend. Yeah, it's got the it pulls up the strike keyword, which isn't quite right here. Let's get these. Hey, hourglass is helpful. Please heal me. This is not a heal. Well, hopefully everything will be fine. Choose a stance to enter. Fetch a finisher from your draw pile. Okay. Oh, execute was already in my hand. Fair enough. Fair enough. Countered. Defensive style. Enter defensive stance. Defensive skill bonus grants more counter for the rest of the fight. Pile driver. 10 damage, 2 vulnerable and weak. That's a finisher card. Okay, I think I'm going to skip all these and we're going to try to win the next fight and the boss fight with only 9 health. I'm definitely a little worried about that, especially with this being our uh, regular combat here, but... Don't doubt our potential. More vigor, please. I think I'll kill the spike slime first. And then I want to enter defensive. But I can switch. <laughs> we get 45 block on turn one because of course we do. And the counter applies just to the front one, not to the back one. No it is. When you enter a stance, trigger the skill bonus twice. Enter Berserker, activate the bonus twice. Enter defensive, activate the bonus twice. Look at that. 11 vigor, 22 counter stacked up. We're going to be fine. Crotch. Swift pot's all right. Adrenal armor, chain lash, or headbutt. Definitely think chain lash could be good. Is chain lash upgrade to. Yeah, plus three, huh? Hmm. Tempting. Relic seems a little OP. I think we're going to find quite a few things that are uh, very, very strong in Downfall. And that's okay. I, I like it, truthfully. Let's go Swift Potion, Essence of Steel. We're going to want all the help we can get for uh, for this Silent. Hopefully this isn't a Poison Silent. Uh, but we'll see. I wonder if the bosses have been revamped at all. Oh no, it is. Oh dear. I only get one of these. Hmm. So, we're fighting the Silent. The Silent has a deck of cards, uh, and each turn will express an intent of cards to be played. The adventurers kind of have pre-crafted relic sets and decks. The Silent has the Twisted Funnel, starting me out with four poison and is going to apply... Crippling Cloud here, although do note that we start with an Antidote card. Warning, highly toxic. Poison is blockable and deals damage at end of turn. Receive an Antidote at the start of combat. Okay, so the poison is blockable, it says. And that means we can we can just block it and we'll be fine. And if we get too much of it, I'll purge. There might even be a Catalyst in this character's deck. Kentucky Jelly Assassin, thank you so much for the full year of support. Currently in defensive stance. 
that understands. Might be a good time for the Swift Potion, actually. This doesn't look like the greatest turn one. Oh yeah, there's the, the, the tooltip there. Yes, poison is blockable. It says that here as well. Gotcha. It's going to get 14 block next turn. Definitely the... Something of note for the bosses of Downfall. Since they're based on the characters of Slay the Spire, they get block way more often than other bosses do. Okay, let's do Technical Jig and then draw. Perfect. Ish. Back into defensive mode. Clobber and Strike are basically the same. We'll keep the antidote. This is retain, right? No? Oh dear. Well, that's horrifying. Wait, the horn cleat didn't kick in? Because... That, that's not right. This is definitely turn two. <laughs> Incorrect. All right, well, let's start by getting some skills. Oh, that's right, that Silent hasn't taken her turn two yet, I suppose. I'll allow that. Trigger your current stance's skill bonus four times. Next turn we're drawing this. Casual 28 counter. Well, this puts us into Berserker next turn, so we want to be in defensive at the end of the turn. So we'll bob and weave, enter Berserker, play the strike. Stance, stance, enter defensive, play the strike. Play the reinforced body. Okay, so let's check incoming damage here. We take 11 plus 6. Poison activates at end of turn. Yeah, so we take 11 plus 6. We block all of that. Don't need to use this Essence of Steel yet. It's not. Yeah, there's the Horn Cleat. 10 times 2 plus the 13, so 33 damage headed my way. Here on turn three, I guess that's fitting for an Act 1 boss fight, except I don't have a real way to prevent it. Terrifying. Am I dead? That is the question. I think the answer is yes. Super dead. GG. Desecrated. All right, we'll have to give the champ another go here. What went wrong here? Not enough rest sites, actually. Just not being able to have enough health um, for our boss. We unlocked one of the relics that we just used. Classic Spire unlock shenanigans. Oh, I'm not learning as I go. I know exactly what I'm doing. Let's try that again. Now we get a starting bonus, too, which is quite nice. Our act boss is the Watcher. 
How do you unlock the different skins for the characters? They're unlocked if you win a run with the character. I don't know if you have to beat Act 4. I think you just have to win. So, hardest thing about Downfall is definitely the elite placements. Sometimes. And the shops. Shops are also awkward as hell. Okay, I think I like this. One, two, three. Yeah, we'll recall to start. Although, if I don't take money... Being in a stance is quite nice. <laughs> Let's just take money to start. You fall into a puddle. It's made of slime goop. You can feel the goop in your ears, goop in your nose, goop everywhere. Climbing out, you notice that stuck to your body is a unique looking yellow slime creature. It appears to have been collecting souls from unfortunate adventurers who fell into the puddle. How convenient. Old harvest. Gain 300 souls and three curses. 200 and two curses, or 101, and each of these are um, like a slime that adds another slime, so it's a pretty annoying card to play it two times to get rid of it. And not for that much money either, but we aren't even going to a shop. Well, heck. Give me one, I guess. Not wanting to make this unfortunate puddle incident go without reward, you strike the yellow slime creature. It bursts instantly. You didn't think it possible, but you find yourself covered in even more goop than before. It's too much goop. Way too much goop. It goes right into your hand, though, at least. That's good. The Zyle's Potion. Crooked Strike. Deals damage, but does not consume vigor. Interesting. Let's take a Bring It On. So we have a one-cost finisher card. Nine block and nine counter. Tropic Brew Distill Chaos. Heck yeah. Sign me up. I guess I could go like this way now. Yeah. There's technical jig again. Challenge. Gain 8 block, deal 8 damage. If the target has strength, do both of these effects again. Interesting. And there are cards that can give enemies strength, too. Seems like it's highly effective on most bosses. Well, uh, most of the vanilla bosses, actually. I guess the characters don't really gain strength that much. Hmm. Let's try it. Raise to 11 11. Yeah, let's give it a try. Oh, yeah, we can break the ruby key here. Spend 100 souls destroying our ruby key to gain a strength that also doesn't consume our fire actions, so we can now upgrade uh, execute as well. Dolphin's Style Guide. Dolphin. You end your turn while in no stance, draw one extra card next to turn. It's kind of cool. I'll give a shout out. To uh, the very incredible, talented Dolphin Chemist. He's been playing a lot of uh, Downfall on his stream lately. Very chill place to hang out.
Hmm, what do I upgrade here? I guess we could upgrade challenge. That's gonna be what we do. My hand is too full. Oh, the knob gains strength. The knob can be challenged. Let's expend some potion resource here. Really didn't go all that well, huh? Oh dear. Terrifying. Deeply terrifying. I really want to execute next turn with the Vigor bonus. Let's just stack some stuff. Of course I didn't draw it. Why would I? Heck. Brutal. Hmm. Now we're in real trouble again. Tempted to bring it on challenge because playing the bring it on gives the knob strength, so it'll hit the knob twice with challenge. I could also use the skill potion to do that. My problem with playing bring it on is that I'm no longer in a stance for execute to work. Let's see what this does. Draw three cards. Interesting. That will let me draw the execute right now. Of course, then I can't play challenge. Does the finisher take you out of your stance? Yes. Yes, it does. So, that is a mild problem. This is defensive stance. Hmm. I'm gonna try it. I don't know if this is gonna work. I think it is, because I drew both defensive shout and berserker shout. That's pretty hype. That means I can do execute Shout, bring it on, shout, for example, or something ridiculous, and then I draw this next turn and die. Dang it. <laughs> uh. hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Currently in defensive, right? So I want to do bring it on, berserker shout, execute, defensive shout. Oh, that's true, we'll get an extra card if we're not in a stance, which could save my life. So maybe I don't end with the defensive shout. I do deal 25 damage back, actually. And I could make it 29. Not gonna be enough to kill, right? Doesn't look like it. Okay, let's draw the extra one card. We'll see what happens here. Is challenge better than execute? It sure is if I draw execute with no stance at the start of the next turn. Dang these draws, man. Use the weak 
out there. Blank card. Start of each combat, play a copy of a random card from your deck. Oh, also, I'm not sure that um, that challenge even it, it plays twice, but I think the vigor only applies to the first hit, whereas execute gets the vigor bonus on both hits. That's why execute is better than challenge there for the most part. Start of each combat, play a copy of a random card from your deck. Wow, just process that. Choose a stance to enter. Fetch a finisher from the draw pile. Yeah. How do you break the green key? You must spend souls at a rest site to do so. Which I think we're going to do. Rather than going to the third elite, I'll, I'll rest here. Because we're going to have the same problem otherwise, which is... I'll get destroyed, sir. <laughs> Got him. Like strike you play this turn is played twice. Enter defensive gain block that's boosted by vigor. Interesting. We're in okay shape at the moment. Do I want one of these cards? Not really. I forget what breaking the green key gets us. Because that's the decks are ten health. I can't remember. Jumpy. Good, clean fight. Zero cost. We gain two strength. All enemies gain one strength. Hmm. Brimstone at home. And it's exactly enough strength to make this challenge work. Which, uh, I think... I think sells me on it, personally. What's the upgrade? Just gain three. Nice. Oh no, NGAD, you might be right about that. If it plays Icky, we get another Slimed. All the more reason to remove that immediately. Oh, yes, gain one dex. Let's do that. And then I'm going to sleep. We have two out of three keys broken. We still need the blue key. Another chance to get cursed. At a soul shrine. So many curse opportunities in Downfall, it feels like. Maybe too many. Take one more event. I like the events in uh, Downfall a whole lot. Attacking us for 14, huh? Chant might have a different definition of clean fight than everybody else does. Execute was in my opening hand. Circumvent looking better now with dexterity on it. Love some card draw. Mega0125, thank you so much for that full year of support. Much love. Weak potion. Go skill potion, Blessing of the Forge. Hey there, Jedit. The crowns just indicate that we're um, that a card is a champ card. Every single card uh, has a crown. It's all for style. Uh, although if you're asking about the ones that are over our heads, you'll see, anytime we're in a stance, you'll see three bubbles here. As we play skills, those bubbles will fill up, or, well, deplete rather. And they're indicating how many times we can get the skill bonus from our stance. If I play good through clean fight, I'll take one more damage. There's no real reason to do that, I suppose. Oh, wait, right. We're going to gain 10 block as our finisher there. Well, never mind. Okay, we're in much better shape to fight the boss this time. Didn't, uh, 
didn't run into the boss with only 10 health, although I miss our end of turn block build we had going on. Deal damage equal to your counter to all enemies. Lose half of your counter. Oh, I love that. Only half of it. Let's just turn counter into area damage. Benefits from strength as well. I like that. The upgrade is zero cost. Oh my. Hello and welcome from the YouTube Pencils. You keep watching, I'll keep making content. Sound good? Upgrade 12. If the last played was a finisher, do it again. Let's take a preemptive strike. Give it a try. Alright, this time our act boss is the Watcher. She is preparing to wallop us. Also does three damage per turn with a Mercury Hourglass. Very rude. Two card, two extra cards on turn one with the Bag of Prep, which has given her a Sands of Time. We'll have to be very scared, uh, uh, wary of. I'm worried this character might do Wrath Stance Sands of Time for 50 damage later. Unbridled Rage. Oh, here it is. At the end of her turn, if Watcher is at or below half health, she enters Wrath. Watcher's Wrath increases damage dealt and received by half instead of 100% because that would be too scary otherwise. Yeah, that sounds right. She's also got the Cloak Clasp, giving her a little bit of block at the end of turn, but the characters in uh, Downfall really don't get a whole lot of card draw. Only base, like, three per turn. Yeah, draw two less cards. So three per turn is very going to be not very much block. So we can execute to gain strength, then go back into Berserker Stance. I think I want to defend Execute Berserker Shout. That sounds right. Didn't get hit for a little bit because of the contribution to the Hourglass. Talk to the hand! Oh no! <laughs> I'm being talked to. If we give the Watcher strength, I'm a little afraid of what that's going to entail. But if we don't give her strength, then challenge won't work, so I should I should give her one. It also gets rid of good clean fight. This would be a reasonable time to upgrade my hands. With the uh, Blessing of the Forge. I like that that actually updated the uh, intents properly. 20 damage strike. That's right, we have the style manual, so we get a bonus card draw here. Panacea Fasting? Uh oh. That means Sansa Time is headed our way next turn. We gotta be really careful about Wrath Stance timing then. Uh, looks like we'll draw a challenge next turn, though, so that'll be perfect. Don't want to draw with Circumvent here. In Berserker or defensive again? Uh, well, I can't change stance if I'm not going to Berserker, so it has to be Berserker. Got it. Here it comes! 24 damage. I can block that with challenge. Good. Very good. Pick three. Now she wrath. Fortunately, that means the Watcher will take more damage as well as deal more damage.
they stack in counter or bigger? Counter. D6. Uh oh. I need. I need to win. Or I can just block actually for 36. That seems pretty reasonable. She's gonna get a ton of block this turn. 36 from Wallop. Some from Hall. We'll take damage from Regret though, at least. Go bring it on circumvent. No, circumvent has to be first, or I won't draw cards. Well, I can get back into defensive stance here too. We can block for thirty-six. Means I'll still take three because that stinky hourglass. Oh no. Sands of time, please. You must stop now. She's got so many curses. What happened to this lady? <laughs> she had a bad time in the spire. GG! All right, that was that was a, a tough fight, but now we win. Ignore pain. Your HP cannot be reduced until your next turn. How's that for an impervious card? Murder strike. Deal eight damage when you use a skill. This deals two more damage. This combat it has retained. Oh man, so it gradually powers up as you play skills until it finishes. Or Devastate, deal six damage three times, costs one less for each finisher card played this combat. Upgrades to nine times three, that's pretty cool as well. So you have to play two or three finishers before it's usable. I think I like Ignore Pain a lot, just don't lose any health when you might lose health. Seems good to me. Definitely feels like this deck needs a little bit more help doing damage still. But I'm gonna grab this Ignore Pain. No. Champion's Crown and the Busted Crown, both question mark? Gain energy the server turn, but two less cards to choose from. Busted Crown Champ Run sounds pretty difficult, honestly. Although I would appreciate the additional energy. Could instead take Runic Dome, be unable to see enemy intents. That sounds very difficult to use against bosses that I'm not familiar with their patterns. Maybe we just go Tiny House. Take no downside, get a bunch of stuff. 50 souls, one potion, five max health. One card, one random upgrade. A crown for a king. Ignore Pain Upgrade do? Great question. Probably one cost? Yeah. One cost. I'm gonna take the house here. I don't- I really don't want the downside of either of these boss relics. So I'll upgrade a defend, take a cultist potion. Retain it, draw one card, finisher. Interesting. Just to activate your stance. Two block- six block, ten counter. If your counter is used, gain repost. Post? Oh, it's a card. Deal damage equal to the amount of counter used. Hmm. I'll take a stance dance. Actually, that's true. With the Dolphin Manual, we are encouraged to uh, exit stance at the end of the turn. 
We're fighting the gunslinger at the end of the act. I've never faced this character before. I, with, I can't imagine trying to do that with uh, with Runic Dome. Here, fight a boss you've never fought before with Runic Dome. Good luck. Not an unreasonable idea to go to a shop here. I don't think I'll be able to defeat the shopkeeper. You have to do very good damage for that, but we'll be able to spend money at the shop afterwards, so that's a good idea. Okay, let's start with that. Become zero cost, nine block. Doesn't exhaust, interesting. Six, this is eight. Let's upgrade the stance dance. Choose a stance and gain a combo. All right, Mr. Merchant Man, you versus me, let's fight. Am I gonna Cultist Potion in this fight to do a little bit more damage here? I think I am. So the merchant will stick around for a few turns. He'll steal some money from me, throw some coins at me, and then he'll flee. If we can kill him before he does, then we'll get a special reward. But otherwise, uh, we'll just get to progress to the shop fight afterwards. So we just want to do as much damage as we can here. Any damage we deal will persist to the next time we see the merchants. Counter only applies one time, right? It's not going to be per hit or anything shenaniganry. Able to block for enough here. I don't need to ignore pain, so we can do like. Defend. Bring it on. Preemptive strike. Do some of that counter. Yeah, it only applies one time. And now he flees. Draw two attacks. You got it, buddy. Okay, we did over 100 damage to the merchants. We might be able to kill him next time we meet him. An upgraded good clean fight. Holy moly. Upgraded refreshment. Berserker combo. Gain three energy and exhaust or defensive combo. Draw four. I want to draw four cards. Give me that. I agree, Master Toaster. Dealing 400 damage in killing the merchant here at the end of Act 1 or beginning of Act 2 is difficult. Not impossible, but definitely, definitely difficult. Definitely tempted by Omomori. There seems to be a lot of curses in the events of, uh, of Downfall. Rapid Strike. Steal four damage two times. A strike in your hand costs zero this turn. Interesting. Requires block. Four damage to all enemies four times. Curious. I like that Guardian Whirl. Anything that scales well with strength, I like quite a bit. I definitely also like a card removal. Um, probably. Oh, no, no, the Icky. Yes, get rid of Icky, please. Please get rid of Icky. Fight, fell, and feed. So, things that let us do more damage. Happy Flower would be nice for more energy. Uh, the stack would definitely appreciate a little bit more of that. Let's start with that. Can't quite afford the waffle, but I could take Omomori. 
or I can take something like Rapid Strikes or Guardian Whirl. Heck it, let's buy Omomori too. Just take two relics here at the shop, two common ones, and see if we can't uh, can't get get something good for that later. I have played all of the characters in this mod before. Yes, Scott Free. Every last one of them. They're all pretty dang cool. Champ is definitely my favorite of the ones that I remember. Remember Hexagos being a little complicated? I actually would really like to replay Hexagos, see if they've simplified that a bit. Berserker, please. Thanks. Gain three energy and then exhaust it. You don't... You don't say. Hiya! And all that. Face slap. Deal 14 damage twice if enemy is vulnerable. Reserve combo apply to vulnerable. The slapitude. Oh, there's chain lash and it says plus. This turn your skill bonus effects are increased by three. So when we combo our stances by playing more skills, we will get more stuff for doing so. I'll take it. Also a zero cost card, with, which goes great with the fact that I didn't even take a real boss relic. Uh, I started in Berserker, so let's change to defensive. Activate twice. Good. Both have the same health, so we'll target the one at the back. Oh, actually, the Vigor does apply to both hits. Hm. I was incorrect in my assumption earlier. Well, that's good to know. In defensive, so this will be draw four. Good. So now, skill bonuses are bigger. So I'll gain tons of vigor for playing these defensive cards. Can't quite kill you. Twice if any mini is weak. No applies weak. Perfect. Beautiful fire. Yeah, stance stance seems crazy good, because you can you can expect to get either damage from a berserker combo or block from a defensive combo. Berserker skill bonuses are better. I actually like set a trap quite a bit now that I've seen it more. It's a good way to apply weaken, although... We're still focused on dealing our damage a little bit better. This crown orang is pretty good for that. Let's draw two attacks. Helps me do more damage. Draw three, good lord. What? Hmm. I'll take the Krenorang. 
Let's see how we feel about that. I played a Sender's Bane with the blank card. That's so rude. Ugh, all right. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> Real. Two more decks. I think all of our cards cost random amounts seems pretty bad, actually. Especially if that random amount is three. It's literally just three. <laughs> Alright, well, heck. Guess I'll ignore pain for one turn and try again. Now it's 27, you know? Problems Town is occurring. Six block, ten counter. Hmm. To be in defensive stance. Enter a stance or get another card next turn. I think I want to be in defensive stance again. That's very good. Please, you must seize your results, sir. have to. Or I'm gonna perish. Here we go. Uh, oh yeah, and it, the text is highlighted as to which one we're getting. Good. Defensive shout, defend, strike, preemptive strike? I don't know if that's going to kill. I don't. Yes, exactly. Good. Just barely. Ooh, Sigil of Victories. Trigger your current stance's skill bonus four times. And that's going to combo exceptionally well with Chain Lash. Because then the, they get, like, a multiplicative bonus. Give me that. Upgrade is six? Six times? Wow. Also, definitely down for more zero-cost stuff at the moment. We're going to have to fight an Elite shortly. Probably this one, I'm thinking. Go this way here. Upgrade Relic, figure it out from there. Probably going to upgrade either Crown Orang for more damage and draw one more attack. Maybe Sigil of Victory. This doesn't exhaust. If there's anything else I can get for better card draw, it's probably the way to go. So yeah, Crown Orang upgrade looking good. Let's do that. Bottled Flame, not interested. Although Bottled Crown Orang is actually not bad, because then I can just guarantee draw three attacks on turn one. Hmm. But if I take the blue key, we can break it at uh, a later rest site for 100 souls. That'll give me 10 max HP. Very, very valuable. The book next to the blank card is Dolphin's Style Guide. We draw one extra card on a, the turn after we end our turn with no stance. And Lathiel asks, is there a way to get a fully unlocked downfall file somewhere? Yes, you can edit the Slay the Spire files. Uh, let's see, they're in your Slay the Spire directory. The unlocks and such are all stored in the preferences folder of Slay the Spire. 
uh, STS player, STS data defect, STS data silent, and then there's a corresponding save file for each of the modded characters. You can open up these files with a text editor and change the ascension level in order to unlock all the ascensions. Um, I don't know if anybody's written a guide for this ex exact sort of thing, but I didn't find it too difficult when I did it myself. But that's the place to go. Go to Slay the Spire, Preferences, and the files in there can be edited. Wow, a free draw four. Thank you, blank card. That was sweet as heck. And if I can get into Berserker, I can now gain four energy. I totally can. Sweet. I'm definitely thinking about using the Blessing of the Forge to upgrade all of these cards. This looks like a fantastic turn one. On a lot of levels. But I'll play Circumvent first. Circumvent. Upgrade Potion. I don't believe I have links banned Flutter Dash, so please feel free to, if you've got a link there, share it up. Okay, we've got Chrono Rang 2, which can draw three attacks. Even better. Hold on, we need to make room in hand then. Okay, so I won't upgrade the Berserker's Shout. She waits. Hmm, complicated. Do you want to get preemptive strike and upgrade that? That'd be really good. So, how do I make that happen? My hand is too full. Oh, I don't exit Berserker Stance, right? So I can go Berserker Stance, Refreshment, then Crown Orang. Okay, good. So I do gain, when I play these cards, I do gain the combo bonus from the previous stance. Did you notice that? We had one skill combo left when I play the, the shout. All three. Oh, I did not get... Preemptive Strike, unfortunately. Could Gambler's Brew for it, but I don't think I'm going to. Probably going to do something like execute chain lash strike to just kill him. There's a defensive shout in there somewhere. Maybe I don't use the uh, blessing of the forge actually. Oh, there's an in-game mod menu for it. Even better. Rather than mucking around with it edit directly editing save files. That's beautiful. I can play challenge as well. you. A little bit here. Only only 8 damage. No potion used yet. We do 13 to the front guy with the counter. Not bad, all things considered. Not bad at all. Fetch a finisher from the draw pile. So there are no finishers in the draw pile. So I should only use that to get back into 
and defensive stance. gain 8 block. A 15, 15 twice. Play this here, then this here. Take 10 more, but we win the play. Good stuff. We get 35 gold, a whetstone, upgrading 2 random attacks. And we're offered another stance dance if we want one. I'll consider it. Definitely gonna take Whetstone. We upgrade the preemptive strike, it's now free. Love to see that. Not sure about these. More stinky unupgraded cards. So our immediate pressure is making sure we're doing enough damage. What about the blocking game? Blocking is is nice. Doesn't really feel like these help that much for blocking. Let's get them all. Oh no! I <laughs> gave the snake plant strength. Well, that's not good. That's not good at all. However, think of all the counter I'm about to gain by chain lash sigil of victory. Not gonna block for much here. Doesn't feel like the Gambler's Brew necessarily helps. Sigil of Victory. I, we could upgrade with Blessing of the Forge. That's also not really necessarily helping. Unless I can kill with 81 counter, which I don't think I'm able to do, but actually, wait. Okay. Let's see how this does. Two counter, not quite enough. Dang. A second chain lash? Honestly, yes, please. Actually, no, another circumvent. That's card draw and block. That's what we need more pressingly. Break our sapphire key to gain 10 max health and then sleep to gain some health. Back up to 50 here. Don't think it's worth it to fight a merchant at the moment. We should go, like, this way? That feels right. Ignoring pain. Okay, then. That's also not necessarily what I wanted to do, but... You know how it is. Right, that's right. There's preemptive strike, perfect. So now we want to gain a lot of counter. Stance, stance into defensive. Activate sigil of victory. Flash strike gives me more counter and block. Preemptive strike now does 40 damage to all enemies for zero cost. Beautiful. 
none of these feel all that good. I guess I could maybe use another Bring It On, but I don't really want one. Kimmel Crush says, kind of annoying that you have to hover to see what stance you're in. The sprite that uh, the champ is using does indicate his current uh, current stance. I didn't take that second chain lash. Took something else. I understand. I I agree. I do wish the tr the crowns changed colors or indicated in a, a little bit more clear of a way. And I think it's a little bit more um, apparent if you're using the the non-naked champ sprite. Not sure if I should upgrade Sigil of Victory or Good Clean Fight. I think I'll upgrade Sigil. Give me the skill bonus six times. It sounds pretty wild. Clodzer, thank you so much for 17 months of support. Game figure. No, I want to gain counter. I can't gain counter. I understand. Very well. Go defend, bring it on, preempt them. Keep hitting chosen? Now the bird will outright die actually if I do this. Let's just kill the bird. Rip bird. Deal damage equal to your block twice. Gain two frail. Defensive combo. Lose two frail. It's kind of neat. Equal to your block. I could keep switching stances here to gain more counter and vigor, but each card I play will add more um, days to the draw pile. I'm not necessarily looking to do here. Yeah, Berserker stance is the, the fists raised. Defensive stance is the, the hand outstretched. Oh, I can fetch a finisher from the draw pile, right? I have no energy though. I don't want to do that. What are your current stance skill bonus? Five times. Perfect. When you enter a stance, trigger the skill bonus twice. That would help a lot. This one's upgraded though. Gain five block, five counter. And it gets better if you're in a defensive combo. We want technical jig. And am I going to mess with an elite? It's not the three slavers, so the answer is I think yes. I'll mess with the book of stabbing. And I start with 14 stacks of vigor. Heck yeah. a multi-hit that can really take advantage of that, though, you know? Alright, you can't hurt me. Or can you? Ton of counter. Ton of vigor. Now, I want a Berserker Shout, Skill of Victory, Executes. But then I'm not gaining block. We do a ton of damage, though. And we get bonus draw next turn. Is he 
assumed importance. Fetch a finisher from the draw pile. No such thing. I think a stance stance into defensive to draw four off refreshments. That also lets me play bring it on for a ton of block. Perfect. If the Book of Stabbing One's strength is a little spooky. Thinking technical jig, good clean fight, chain lash, and then bottled technique. Bring it on. Get back into a stance. I could also enter Berserker's Dance here. And stack a bunch of vigor. It matters. Big bonus to counter now. 36 counter. Game more counter. Enter Berserker. Beautiful. Well, that's one dead book. Not too bad. We get a preserved insect, making future elites easier to kill. Gut punch. Any stance combo, enter ultimate stance for one turn. Counts as both defensive and berserker stances. If you leave this stance before it expires, immediately re-enter it. That sounds pretty cool. I want to try that. Yes, please. So I can sigil a victory into execute after Berserker shot for really big damage here. We might as well play refreshments. Might as well. Really defensive. Rough war. Good. Kill the cultist <laughs> instantly. Hmm. I would do the same thing to the chosen. It'd be better to do the chosen as our first turn here. And then I could enter defensive stance, or I can draw one more card next turn. Let's draw one more card next turn. Since I have the bonus energy after all. So any stance combo, enter ultimate stance. I gotta try it. <laughs> ultimate stance counts as berserker and defensive for all purposes. So skill bonuses, yes. Gain two vigor and three counter. <laughs> And we'll re-enter it immediately, right? So I can play bring it on, leave the stance, re-enter the stance, and reset the... Oh, man. Wow. OP. Vicious Mockery for stacking more Vigor seems good. I'm still really waiting for a card that hits, like, three or four times. that. Does the vanilla skin do those poses too? Yes, not those exact poses. They're actually animated poses, so they look even better. 
gonna stick with Double Gambler's Brew as we go into the Gunslinger fight here. 36 health, I have to say I'm a little bit concerned about what this guy is gonna be able to do for us. Do to us, excuse me. The Hermit. Oh no. Necronomicon. Philosopher Stone. Oh, he gives me a strength. How nice. Pennib. Pennib Necronomicon. Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Wheel of Fortune. Whenever you strike Hermit with an attack, its leftmost card is discarded, and it draws a card. Every six times this happens, the Hermit gains one strength. So it's like a writhing mass boss. Except it's you're enabled to you know you know ahead of time what the next intent is. So it's writhing mass boss plus Tetris intent showing. I like it. I like it a lot. So if we hit the hermit, we discard strike and draw desperado. Deal 14, gain two frail. Imagine that's only gonna get worse. Let's see. Wide open. Deal eight damage. Apply two holes. It's defensive. This be a good time for ignore pain, actually. Skill bonus gains six counter. <laughs> actually, no. We've got bring it on and such. Perfect. Have some counters, sir. Forty-eight of it, if you don't mind. I wish I could gut punch, but we're out of energy here. Do I want to enter a stance, or do I want to draw a card? I want to draw a card. Alright, what do you got? There's two bold. Hold up. Nine block, two weak. Gain two weak. Gain two rugged. Gain two vulnerable. Gestalt. Interesting. Up next, Itchy Trigger with Necronomicon. Two cost deal 12, dead on. Dead on is if it's in the middle slot of your hand, from what I remember. Thinking about using Crown of Rang to try to get Challenge into my hands. I guess I should get Technical Jig in play. Technical Jig, Berserker Sout, Shout, good clean fight. If I play the Crown Ring, the wide open is discarded. Ghost and Beans, what is the Gunslinger's favorite board game? Shoots and Ladders. No refunds. Now I am a Berserker Man. I think what I want to do is discard Itchy Trigger. Just go good, clean fight, defend here. Don't play the Execute. Although it would do good damage. Uh, 
upgrade all strikes and defends this combat. This can upgrade them any number of times. Reduce your debuffs. He's got Hand Agree, too, so I'll have to hit him two times to ignore that. We can challenge, though. That's going to be OP. Currently in Berserker Stance. Going to do 36 damage twice. Hot. Get him. Phenomic Curse. Play all strikes in your hand on random targets. Neat. So now he's got a strike plus two, and a strike plus. Spooky. So let's go bring it on, and back into defensive. Draw more cards. This actually doesn't seem like too bad of a boss. He's not really scaling, necessarily. Although there is the risk of that pen nib, right? Gotta be careful about that. Currently in Berserker Stance. This hand is terrible. It's rugged. I think that was clear to me. Don't want to open up ourselves to Itchy Trigger here. Although I don't also want to become vulnerable, I suppose. Okay, he doesn't even play it. Aha! So we can just completely ruin his turn. Good. Of course, if I play the preemptive strike, he'll discard a hole up, add hand agreed, play... Um, just all itchy trigger, and that might make then hand agreed free. That'd be a terrible, terrible turn for us. Ultimate stance. So wait, refreshment is going to be both of those? That's OP. Ultimate stance. Get him. GG, you stinky nerd. Oh, that just takes me in and out of the stance. Hot. Get him. GG. Okay, that boss fight was a lot easier than our first one. I tend to find in Downfall that the first act is actually the hardest by far. Um, and then, almost like Monster Train, the further you get into the run, the more absurd your deck becomes. Another chance at a clobber here. We want a way to gain block. We're certainly able to scale up our attack damage pretty well at this point, so being able to turn that into block is pretty good. Word of Strike also works well with our skill spam. I think I'll take a clubber. Oh, victorious crown. Start each combat in ultimate stance, lasting for two turns. That seems pretty absurd. Other options are gain an energy. But who needs energy when you're in ultimate stance? That means we can just play finishers. Ridiculously. But the, the the downside of the Victorious Crown here is that this only has an effect for the first two turns of a fight. So we'll definitely be at a disadvantage in longer boss fights. But the shorter fights, oh boy. We're going to destroy them. 
they have reached the beyond. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments, and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. So, we need to kill the merchant now. In fact, we only have one more chance to kill the merchants. Otherwise, we might not be going to Act 4. I'd say it's much more difficult to get to Act 4 in a run of Downfall. It... not necessarily 100% consistently possible like it is in regular Slay the Spire. And that's because you have to kill the merchants um, and because you have to get the keys and then later break them. Guess we'll go for the slightly later in the act merchants and we'll see what happens here. Innate. It seems pretty good with Ultimate Stance, actually. Yeah. Killing Merchant is not required to go to Act 4 anymore. If that's true, then good. Very good. I do still like Gut Punch. Oh, gosh. Well, I guess I'm losing it. <laughs> Those other cards are better. All right, Mr. Merchant Man. It's time. Du -du 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 Duel. So I should get the skill bonus of both stances twice. Yes. And if you exit the stance, you... Oh, go back into it. Holy moly. It's a good turn. Yes! Yes! Double yes! This is extre extremely busted. <laughs> so if I enter defensive, I immediately go back into ultimate, right? That's right. Likewise, if I play bring it on, I immediately go back into ultimate stance. Next time you receive attack damage, deal 126 damage back. Okay. I guess I don't mind if I do. Bye! So, when you kill the merchant, you get 300 souls, plus any souls the merchant has stolen from you previously. Oh, I'm definitely taking a moment of truth. Give me that. Sacrifice! The Evil Within. Add a random boss card to your hand. I want to, like, show some of the boss cards. That's cool. It's a really cool card. Yeah, there's, there's a times four hit card. The Guardian Whirl honestly seems insanely good with her ability to stack Vigor. Chemical X plus Reinforced Body is here. Duria is here, although I don't think I'd be able to lift enough times for that to be worthwhile. A guardian world. Strategy potion lets you choose a stance card. Stim pack, enter ultimate stance for one turn. Good stuff. This really does feel like our boss relic is just just says enter divinity stance on turn one equivalent. Pretty powerful. 
All right, let's lose one of our basic strikes. Anything else I want to do here? I could still go Chemex Reinforced. Actually feels pretty good. Let's do that. You fool, I am too powerful for you. Perfect Ur Strike. Eight damage plus three additional for all cards containing a strike. Upgrades to four. It's just better than Perfected Strike. I like that. Apologies, Shallow Thought. I definitely do not remember the automaton well enough to to know to what you refer. Not a clue. I'll fight these nerds. So far, nobody's given me a challenge. Maybe they will. I played Stance Stance right at the start. Perfect. Basically just a free offering. That's kind of absurd. So, we want to play the Guardian Whirl. How do I get that to happen? I have to play Circumvent to defend, but then I can't afford to do that. Give me a defensive combo card, I guess. Still not good enough, huh? Guess we shall do it this way. Seems like it's going all right. <laughs> That's ultimate stance for you. Dead Branch. Whenever you exhaust a card, add a random card to your hand. Don't mind if I do. And I am super taking more copies of Refreshment because they're obscene. They're just free card draw on energy if I'm in ultimate stance. So far, nothing's lasted long enough for me to exit Ultimate Stance, either. Max two Elites from here. Yeah, let's fight this one. First up, the Reptomancer, the tiny Reptomancer with plus strength. Terrifying. Definitely terrifying. Need to play Guardian Whirl. If possible. A moment of truth is appropriate enough. So that'll give me the block I need to play uh, Guardian Whirl. Enchant Sword! Choose a card in hand, increase its damage by 8 for this combat. That's kind of neat. I guess I could actually just use Preemptive Strike instead of Guardian Whirl. Block with Clobber looking pretty good. That poor lady. She got clobbered. Shield throw is pretty good. Another Chain Lash has got to be better, though. Please let me stack more skill bonus. Please. Pen Nib is excellente. 
Get that chain lash upgraded. Yes. Up to full lose 16 max. Seems like a bad deal. You actually need the money. Instead of getting 333, you spend 333 here. That's interesting. Leave wondering what could have been. I almost want to rest at this last fire. Just make sure I have enough health to get to Act 4. Feels like we're strong enough otherwise. Let's do it. Give me a sleep. A free strike, oh boy. This is not a great turn one, you know? I'll go ahead and use my gambler's brute here. Just a bit better. And all of that carries over to next turn, so we can just build up an obscene amount of stuff here. And then, yeah. Have a free shot. Beautiful weakling. Beautiful. 152 vigor, 165 counter. How's it going, Chrono? Thank you so much for the 40... Two months of support. Beep. Nice. With the strike dummy making champs strike cards deal three more. Champ's got a lot of cards that say strike, so that's cool for him. Ooh, an upgraded bring it on feels pretty nice. Second copy of Technical Jig, not bad either, but I think we want additional finishers at the moment. Upgraded bring is great. Slime soup. When you enter a rest site, begin the next combat with a prepare card costing zero. Hmm. I don't know what that means exactly, but we'll see. You come across a dapper-looking, cheery gremlin. Despite your menacing appearance, he seems unfazed, though you do catch him hesitantly glancing backstage. It's time to spin the wheel! Are you ready? Team six outcomes. Oh boy! A gift! Again? What do you mean, again? Again? Again! Gremlin nervously looks over his shoulder but quickly relaxes. You see I him gesturing with his hand but disregard it. Now, now, friend, the wheel has fairly decided your reward. No one gets a second spin. Again! Knob! A lumbering gremlin! emerges from the shadows, towering over the gremlin, the table, and you. My friend here suggests you take what the wheel has offered. Obtain a relic or fight and gain the gremlin wheel. We gotta know what this is. Fight. It's a gremlin knob plus a sneaky gremlin. Since you can encounter this in Act 1, I imagine um, the fight is balanced for that. Get the Wheel of Change. At each rest site, you may spin the wheel. Choosing to collect its reward uses up this relic. That's pretty cool. And 100 souls, which is very valuable. Maybe the relic was better, but I had to know what we get. I like it. I like it a lot. 
Oh, Pennib is here. Heck yeah. But I gotta do Chain Lash first. Interesting. Well, actually, hold on. One has to know. Yeah. This does seven damage two times. Bring it on, Joe Worms. I should have chain lash first. Oops. It's all good. One more chain lash with feeling. Yeah. All right, our act three boss is a 500 health silence. The Silent has Kunai, Ornamental Fan, Shuriken, and Mummified Hand, but the Fusion Hammer, probably meaning not many upgraded cards here. Love Tap, thank you so much for two months of keeping it cozy. Much love to you. This looks like a tempting time for the Sneka Oil, perhaps. Do I have to fight another boss here? It's deeply unclear. Pretty good turn one, we did like 200 damage here. Definitely don't want to give the silent strength. Looks like a pretty bad idea. Six damage to all enemies four times. Okay. Don't mind if I do. Do take a bit of damage here. That's okay. We get to ignore pain. Unfortunately, I'm not in a stance here. So Chain Lash Sigil of Victory does nothing. Boss is almost dead, though. I don't feel the need to use the potion right now. Okay, what's your ability? First time you play a card that costs two or more each turn, Silent gains two shivs. I definitely missed that. Okay. Oh, that's right, we lost our Enter Ultimate Stance for one turn card, didn't we? Hmm. I can hit that Berserker Shunt, though. for a bunch. They're only going to gain more and more strength, though. Only in a bit of a pickle here. Okay. Yeah, one... Essentially one turn to, to set ourselves up here. 
Berserker stance. Hmm. I'm concerned. I seem to run out of momentum. Are the relics on the bosses random? I believe that each adventurer has a specific setup that they'll use if they're the boss of a particular act. So, for example, if you fight Silent as your Act 3 boss, it'll always be this exact set of Silent cards and this exact set of relics. There's no random variation there. I'm gonna go. Do I play good clean fight? I really need to not draw it again, I think is the, the thing. So, yeah, I'll do it. Spooker. This is like Pile Driver Defend? Yikes. Doesn't feel good. Alright, fine. Unfortunately. Hmm. I'll gain ten block for exiting this too. Okay. Bonk. That reduces the damage output substantially. Could gain twelve bigger and then attack for big number. I don't think it's worth it. Let's just try to headbutt a card that might let me finish this lady to death. Need to get back into a stance. All oh, right, I'm gonna give her shits. Crap. Lady, man. Okay, we survived the silent fight. I believe since we're on A20, we have to fight another boss. I brought him back. Uh oh. The merchant is here. Terrifying. That's good. Be a good turn. I'll tell you that already. Just do bring it on Guardian World? It's gonna be hard to beat that. The bomb. Gotta watch out for the bomb. Let's activate my skill bonus six times. Sound good? Yeah. If the enemy is a boss, do damage two more times. If not, stun it. That's cool. Are you a boss? You sound like you're a boss. Stunned. And killed. 
GG, Mr. Merchant Man. To thump, to thump, to thump, a comforting heartbeat can be felt throughout the room. Are you at the end? Is your purpose fulfilled? You feel something evil at your very core. It's a new pair of abs developing from pure strength. You give 1679 souls back to the heart. It squirms in elation, pounding forevermore. Have you truly done enough? The heart pulses louder and louder as your consciousness begins to fade. A sudden burst of energy emanates from inside you, jolting you awake. The heart retreats, sensing an approaching threat. The fight is not over yet. Interesting, I'm used to having the merchant rematch occur in Act 4. What happens now in Act 4? We fight the merchant again? Oh, interesting. Arise! Oh, this is completely new. Well, heck. Last Gasp, Caltrops Plus. When this character dies, all characters, including you, gain five thorns. When this character dies, all characters, including you, gain two rugged and two vulnerable. Rugged reduces unblocked damage taken. Watcher. All characters, including you, gain eight vigor. This looks pretty tough. Only there was some way for me to murder them all, just kind of instantly. Do that. Get a bit of damage here. Strike, strike! Oh, in the re oh, Niao is helping. I did not see that. Niao is helping in the back there. That's rude. Last stand. Once you get below half health, remove all debuffs, gain six strength. Interesting. Definitely want a headbutt moment of truth here. Stance you aren't in. Sure. Go with silent. That's the one with the most health. Why not, right? We're still hiding back there. <laughs> That's funny. You've got five thorns. when you get the buff every turn. Oh, this could get interesting. But if I can't finish her off, that'd be very awkward. Thank you. 
Hmm. <laughs> Are you gonna do anything? No? I'm fine with that, I guess. Souls, the art of war. If we don't play any attacks during our turn, gain an additional energy on the next turn. Actually, rather tempted to take Taunt. Let's take his on. One week, one bull might help in the uh, final battle. Wonder if you fight the merchant here if it's not dead. Barbell. We do have a rest site next. Okay, whenever you enter a rest site, if you have at least 10. Non-upgraded cards in your deck, upgrade it one at random. I love that. I really love that as a as a core concept. Rope dope could be good. Second potion could be good. Maybe panacea. I could also see nunchaku being okay for some energy. I'm a little worried that we might not have what it takes for the final battle. Although I do remember the final battle being a lot easier in um, Downfall. I guess I'll go Block Potion. Crooked. Good strike. Yeah. Definitely not bad. I suppose. Could stack a lot of vigor, and this could be really nice. Neat, interesting. Oddly tempted by Chrysalis here. I guess we'll pick up this Crooked Strike, give it a chance. Spin the wheel is a free action. Yeah. Settling in by the fire, you decide to see if you have better luck with the wheel than on your last attempt. Spin the wheel. Aha! The same luck as before. Obtain a relic. Deck is washers. At the start of each combat, draw three extra cards and add a dazed into the draw pile. That's perfect. We need our turn one to be as spicy as possible, and this will definitely help with that. The dazed is not even bad because of the dead branch. Success! You found what you're looking for and just in time. Crack! You might have been a little rough with that last spin. The wheel has been broken. And now we may either rest or recall. We're missing enough health. I'll rest. The uh, rest are upgrade, excuse me. And now we face the God of Life. Hero's Spirit. When Meow uses a buff intent, she gains six strength and two thorns, five mantra, or two random curses, depending on the current hero spirit. Ironclad currently. Hmm. Has the same invincible buff as the heart, can only lose a few hundred health per turn, and heals three whenever we play a card, rather than doing damage to us. Oh, it's the three characters from before. So, two thorns, five mantra, and two random curses. Spooky. Oh, we're going to have a really good first couple of turns, though. Chain Lash in the opening hand is what you want to see. For sure. Next turn, gain two energy, draw two. Do some stuff. Do 
her ultimate stance for two turns. So I can just extend that for two more turns? Is that what you're telling me? Because if so, I like what you're telling me. Yes! Yes! Four turns of ultimate stance. We've got Crooked Strike here with our Vigor, too. Now the current problem is that my hand is too full. Guess that's not really a big problem, huh? Let's go Crooked Strike, Execute for some big damage here. I also have 87 counter ready now. And we get an even better turn next turn. Lots of stinky curses. Uh, Neo adds a whole bunch of the special curses. When you play another card, muddle your hand. So reroll the cost of all cards in your hand, then discard this. Or we can pay two to not lose the bewildered. Not muddle our hand. I think I'll just play a zero cost card. Only kind of works. Ten bigger potion and blessing of the forge. Okay. Two more turns. All right, let's hope like this. Throw all pretty weak attacks. What's the Random card. It's another good clean fight, huh? Hmm. It's getting spooky. Next turn. Get rid of that. Stop giving me those. Okay, ultimate stance is over, huh? That's a little unfortunate. We didn't get to play this refreshment. Although we're mostly done with the fight, so maybe everything's fine? Two more curses. And drawn, add ethereal to all cards in your hand. Need defensive stance, and fetch the bring it on. So if I don't play the Icky, it simply goes away. These also go away. Can't even play Enchant Sword, because they have more time for that move. He knows what's up. All right, Dead Branch definitely helps. Here we go. End of your turn, transform all cards in hand to random status cards. Terrifying. Just terrifying. Seems like a decent time for the Blessing of the Forge.
this is. If your counter is used this turn, gain a repost. So yeah, we can spam counter this turn. That'll be pretty good. Sixteen counter. half the counter if I use the preemptive strike, but I think that's still worth it, right? Probably don't want to have this thing here, huh? Seems like a bad idea. This pot gives us another 10 vigor, 10 more damage on our next hit. Oh, and we were gonna muddle too, I did not notice that. Actually, very, very good. Beautiful. Okay, the post dealing at 66 damage. Good. Oh yeah, thorns. It's spooky though. 90 damage! Oh, went to divinity! I'm gonna die. I think I'm gonna die. Now damn old now it deals triple damage this turn. Spooky. Challenges here. Could do defensive shout, bring it on, double challenger? Hmm. Is that enough to stay alive? I don't think so. So I have to figure out how to kill it. Doesn't seem likely. Oh, and I get to reinforce body at the end, actually. Hmm. Well, give me a defensive combo, I guess. That helps, kind of. Oh, that was my best block. Oh, let's see, if I bring it on, challenge, reinforce, do I survive? That is the question. Uh, bring it on is 20 block, this is... Eight times two because of the thorns. So we're currently at 43, accounting for health and block, plus 20 from bring it on, plus, and then eight times four, which is 32. 95, yeah, we'll live. And we can even play the challenge twice. It's the same as using the reinforced body. Okay, that'll work then. But I might not exit. I might perish next turn, depending on this, right? Can't do a whole lot here. Can we get the kill, or is it all over here at the 11th hour? It doesn't look like there's a whole lot I can do. Wait, pendant! If I use the Vigor Potion with the Penip, that'll be enough damage. It's our most damaging attack. The Headbutt or the Strike Plus. Okay. 
So we'll bring it on first. Chain Lash. Well, do I want the Vigor Potion on this? We can make 50 block? Yeah, I want to do that. Okay. Strike. Vigor Potion. 50 damage plus block. Um. And you died out of the Retaliate. Good. GG, Mr. Whale. Very close. Actually, wait. Ah! Wait a minute. I sense a problem. <laughs> Help! Help! I need block. Okay. Twenty-four to all of these. So we go with Twinkle Armor, eight block, chain lash, death blow. Yeah, we're there. Never. Oh wait. Oh, six thorns. <laughs> oh no. I didn't notice that the thorns went from four to six. Well, heck, you know what? That just seems fitting. You and me both, whale. Oh, we're shattered, removes the enemy's block. I didn't even notice that. You and me both, whale. GG. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.